Hey and welcome back to Building LibreFlip. My name is Ion and today I will finish the installation of the counterweight. I already put the machine on its back because today it's time to exchange this part. And I will exchange this part with this part that is finally printed. The first step is to drill open that hole and that hole with an 8mm bit so that these screws, they are 8x45, actually fit. And if you look from the back, then you can see the hexagonal shape of this hole. And this is for the bolt head to fit into. As usually, a 3D printed hole is a bit smaller than sketched. So I'm just drill it open with an 8mm drill bit. Let's drill open the bolt holes for the 5mm bolts as well. Regarding this part, I can't drill it on the drill press and I'll show you why. Because this part here, it's tilted a bit, like, like so. It's tilted 5 degrees and that has a specific reason. And because the surface is tilted, the hole through the part is also tilted. And because the hole is also tilted, I just can't drill it on the drill press, because that would give me a rectangular hole and not a 5 degree tilted hole. And this is why I need to drill this by hand. So let's do this. Let's remove this part now. Okay. One is off. This, this part, this part we need to keep for the new installation. This part we also keep. This part we keep. And this part we don't need anymore. Let's remove this. Let's remove these M5 by 50 bolts that stabilize the part. Because these, these bolts have no other function but to hold together the individual layers of this part. The M5 by 50 screws, they go through the back of here. But unfortunately, they are not flush. So I will uh, countersink these holes a bit more by hand. That's flush. That's much better. Now all four are flush. Let's put them in. Let's try to put in these bearings on this edge. So, let's see. Here goes nothing. Nothing split. Looks good. This is why I put the bolts in first, to have an honest chance at not splitting this part. Let's try to press in the other bearing with one of these clamps. No. I'm bending these two parts too much. Let's try this with this board the way I just did it. Let's try it this way with something in between. And I'll still try a hammer. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. It's not easy to get this in parallel. That looks better to me. Let's see if I get this together without breaking anything. Now this part. And this part goes in with the flange side towards this end of the part. Yes, it's parallel and I got it now through both bearings. Great! And what's now left is to just put these two on the ends. That one was easy. Great, I think this part is ready to... No, it's not, haha. <laughs> okay, let's put this screw in. Now you can clearly see that this is tilted. 
And I have also these half-sized M8 washers. One goes on here, and then this part goes on this way around. And now the... Do I put a second one on? I did find two self-securing nuts. And this part should still spin freely. So let's go a tiny bit back. That looks good to me. Let's do the same thing for the other part. This one also needs finishing. So this bolt goes in. And a washer on top and a self-locking M8 nut. Do you remember episode 7? Have you been with this series this long? In episode 7, I forgot to include the belt. And you know what I just did? I forgot to include the belt. As I did uh, 20 episodes ago as well. Um, what a coincidence. Let's take this apart and uh, do it again. Now the belt is in. Yes, it's through. Yes, slides right on. So if you are making Libre Flip, don't forget to put the belt on before you count this axis in. It's not fun or easy to get this assembly together. That's it. I think we are now ready to mount the parts. Great! Let's measure where these parts go. So one line is at 64 millimeters, and the other line is at 223, and then there is one line at 303. Let's draw some vertical measurements as well. So one value is 40 millimeters here. 40 and the next one is 28.5 Okay, and let's measure again. I have the plan here and um, The plan Shows the measurement as from the outside and not the inside of this so I actually have to subtract the thickness of the outside structure from every other values and draw it all again Let's subtract 15 millimeters from all of those values. And I hope I remember to correct that in the plans as well, or to at least make clear from where to measure. And let's, let's, yeah, let's measure the proper values. Let's look at this. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see if this lines up. Yep, this lines up rather well with the middle hole of the counterweight. I think we can work with that. Let's let's measure let's measure where the hole needs to go. So uh, 50 here. So while post-processing I realized I never answered what hole. That hole is to attach a bolt, and on that bolt you can tie the line that connects the moving connector plate with the counterweight. And 108. That's where the hole needs to go. Always center punch. It's so much more precision at so little cost of time. And now I need to sink in the space for the bolt head. Let's see if that fits. Looks excellent. Bolt is necessary to have some place to tie off the line that loops around from here, over the pulley, over the other pulley and then around to the counterweight. And I already know that it will be a pain to secure this bolt with the nut from the other side. 
I calculated that the length of cable we need between these two is 70 centimeters, and I think I need 15 centimeters for a proper knot, so I'll cut it off into one meter lengths. Let's go over to the book scanner and mount them. The next step is to attach the line that runs from this bolt over this pulley and then over this pulley and lastly to the counterweight. And this connection is easy and this and this is easy, but putting a knot of the line over this bolt from the backside is really hard. Unless you know a special knot and I would like to show it to you. So come with me. So the knot works like this. I create one loop. Then I create a second loop, and then I put, and the second loop is created the same way around than the first loop, and I put the second loop behind the first loop, or the right loop behind the left loop, and then I end up with two loops over each other like this. And if I now put these two loops over the bolt, and just by grabbing both ends and tightening, I can tighten this bolt really well, and this can't come off anymore now. Let's do this over there, but over there you won't see how I do it. So let's create these loops. So first loop, second loop, behind each other, like this. And now I'll put them over the bolt, somehow. Okay, this is the end to pull on. I have a hard time grabbing it. Uh, Okay, and now I put on the other end. Let's see, let's touch. Let's see by touch whether this was appropriate. Okay, it's attached. Let's put the line over. This one, under this one, then over this one, and then I can tie it off in the counterweight. And here I'm also using a sailing knot, which is called a pal stick. Perfect! Like that. Great! So, uh, look at this. The counterweight now moves up and down. This is really easy and it actually stays in every position. So I would count this as a success. Let's see, um, what's the next step? Um, yeah, actually I want to see if I can now move the box with the summer motor, the motor down here, this one. And if that works, then I can make the two covers for the suction box so it's airtight. And then it's actually time to test the page turning. So we are really close. The counterweight is a really big milestone. I'm rather happy actually right now because I think this won't take that long anymore to test the concept and see if it actually works and then improve it. I know that the small flutter fan on the side here probably needs a, needs a rebuild, needs a remake. I don't think it's going to work like this, but um, that's not a not a big or important uh, or hard task to do. Thanks for watching and I'm not sure if I'm going to release episode 28 next Thursday or the Thursday after, but it's going to come eventually and I'll just keep on working on this because I'm really close to getting this done.